So if we think about the, the ramifications of Russia demanding payments for their energy exports in gold, how likely do you think that scenario is and, and what considerations do we have to think about around that? I think it's highly unlikely at this time. I think it would be kind of a last resort by Russia to do it. But I think it's a very good poker chip to put out on the table and scare people and get, you know, the gold market people and gold in general better recognized. I have, you know, some doubt as far as, you know, how this unfolds all the way. I don't think anyone knows. I think even the bankers think they know. It's not a sure thing. But it's highly likely, Tom, that we will see gold come back into the monetary system in some way, shape, or form, either officially or unofficially. Uh, I did an interview recently. I said, I think the major trend that a lot of crypto people aren't seeing, and this doesn't mean I'm right, but I've been a bit of a visionary on a few things, cell phone, the cell phone industry being one of them. But regardless, I think you're going to see a lot more of the crypto space that goes to tangible assets, you know, cobalt, gold, silver, wheat, uh, that kind of thing. So that that coin, that token represents something in the physical realm. And, uh, you know, the commodity space is wide open to that. So I think there's going to be a demand side on uh, metal that doesn't exist or barely exists now, where a lot of the miners that have to go through the smelter and take whatever is basically being bid on them can make a deal with, let's say, a, someone that you know, produces a gold-backed token, as an example, and go direct to them mm -hmm. and use a, an offtake agreement or a streaming agreement of some type. So there'll be a whole new amount of buyers for precious metals, and that will put precious metals into this electronic platform and it'll be a lot more easy to use. The one drawback that, you know, that I know of is the weight and the value. I mean, it's tough to, you know, take your, I don't know, take four ounces of gold. You're looking about 8,000 bucks. And then, you know, what if you got robbed and all that? And then I don't worry too much about it. But the idea is if it's on your phone or on a platform, you can transfer that through the depository and then the receiver can take it out in physical form or not if they choose to. So that's a big advantage. That's going back to the paper certificates of the goldsmiths. But let's add one more thing. The beauty of the blockchain is the ledger is immutable. You've got a really strong ledger that the bankers can't fool with. Uh, at least that's what's being told to us. So how important do you see silver being relative to oil, David? They're very highly correlated, and I think oil is without a doubt the most important commodity on the planet, bar none, and probably three, ten, three to times, ten times more important than silver. I don't know, but silver is the second most important. And because of that fact, um, a lot of people can you can store silver, um, and you you can store oil, but not very well. So in other words, the average investor can take a position in silver in many different ways. Mm -hmm. But taking a position in oil has to almost be a derivative for the average investor, either an oil company or an oil futures or ETF or something along those lines, where silver is the one that you can take possession of. And the problem, as you know, we keep talking about, is that you can believe you own it. And in actuality, if you read the contract, you actually have a derivative, even though you may be, in some cases, um, paying a storage fee, for example. Mm -hmm. So, David, you know, looking looking forward here, what do you think we could see for the, the gold to silver ratio? Where could that get to? Well, you know, I'm very bullish on silver. And I think the ratio, you know, I wrote about this years ago. There's a document out there somewhere. I think it's probably still on my website called Engineering the Price of Gold. And everybody wants to know what's the paper price of gold. That's a very easy thing to do. Just take the M1 money supply and divide by gold, and you've got dollars per gold. And right now, that's last time I did it, it was north of 15,000. And then you got to look at the gold silver ratio. Well, in monetary terms, the ratio is 15 to 1. So if you took 15 into 15, you know, 15 into 15,000, you get $1,000 silver. And I'm not saying you're going to get, I'm, I'm on record saying $100 silver. But in a, Breakdown scenario, um, especially when the monetary system is going to be reset, we just don't know when or exactly how, a lot of distortions will take place. And something like silver that's so imperative next to oil, maybe foods, I'd say food's more important than 
bit silver. So I'll retract my previous statement somewhat. But yeah, for commodity, well, it's very, very important. So you could see a readjustment price vis-a-vis, you know, gold. In other words, so much silver buys an ounce of gold. And the one thing that's really held silver back is the fact that it's not treated as money. Mm-hmm. I did that whole lecture series. I think you interviewed me when I did that three or four times. What if silver would treat like gold? So if any investment bank, merchant bank, anything but a bullion bank held silver as a monetary asset, you'd have the market on a lot different ratio than you have right now. In fact, I got to digress because this is a fun story. But I had a rather significant hedge fund manager from Asia call me, and he'd been through some of the old studies on silver, and he said, this is it. If we own the silver, it's like owning the oil market. And he wanted me to do white paper, whatever. I want to go down the rabbit hole too far. The idea was, why aren't any of these entities? And I think it's a wink and a nod. I think, and I'm just thinking, I don't know. I don't want to sound like everything I see is a conspiracy. It's just that we did have the demonetization of silver in 1873 and officially in 1965 in the United States. Uh, China was the last to come off the silver standard and they got screwed. And so there's been so much uh, around the silver market that if you really look at it, it's, it's almost an unbelievable story, especially if you even go to the Bill Still film you know, Secrets of Oz, where he really breaks down that the Wizard of Oz is just a whole metaphor. You know, if we want to go back to Kansas, we click our silver slipper because silver is what Frank Baum put in the book, not Ruby. They put Ruby in the movie just to distort it because they don't want the people waking up to the fact that all we've got to do is put real money in the people's hands and we've got some control and we can go back to Kansas. It's-